Good morning, church. Thank y'all for letting me be here with y'all this morning. I thought there was, I was like, he, he, he lied to me. He told me there was going to be some video up there, and I was like all scared. I watched last night and started crying about it because it was him and Schaefer greeting me and just welcoming me in. And then I was like, for, I was mentally praying myself for the past like 30 seconds to make sure I didn't cry this morning, and then it didn't come up. So that's good. So y'all have to watch me, you know, hold that tears up here on the stage all morning. But I'm so grateful for the opportunity to just be here and share with y'all this morning. And thank y'all for letting me come be here to be able to worship with y'all this morning. And so a little introduction as to who I am. My name is Luke Moss, and I am a youth ministry teaching intern here at the church. I've been serving in that position for coming off in about three years at the start of this next school year. And so what that means is I get to do a little bit of anything and everything that goes along with serving in the youth ministry, whether it be picking up almost all of these chairs along with the help of a couple of other uh, interns and Alex, or you know, coming up with the lessons recently this past year, I've been blessed with the opportunity to be able to actually start taking over for the teaching to the middle schoolers um, every single week, and that's been an extremely amazing blessing and opportunity that I've been able to step into. And then just, you know, the, the day-to-day stuff, the planning camps, events, you know, just having fun and get to hang out with the amazing group of students that we have. And so today, they finally let me come to Big Kid Church, and I'm excited to, for the opportunity to, you know, add that to the resume. Uh, but today, I'll be continuing our series that we've been in for the past month of transformations. And we'll be continuing this series, and we've been going through it as it's together in common ground and traditional at the church for about the past month now. And what we're really digging into and diving into is these moments in our lives, these big, unforeseen, and chaotic moments in our lives that are transformative, just like the series says, transformations, and, and how God uses his power to transform our lives through these different moments that come. And so everything that we've been talking about is based on a book by Dr. Steve Neve called Fall Lines. And so we've been basing all of our seasons that we've been talking about, a lot of our lessons have been based out of this book. And so we encourage y'all as we wrap up this series in the next couple of weeks to if y'all can follow back through and track along with what we've been talking about and dive into it deeper for yourselves so y'all can go check out the book and see what y'all have to see from it. But today, uh, I'm going to be talking to us about the transformative period of a calling. Alex and Schaefer have talked to us about crisis, failure, and fortune so far. And then next week, we're going to get wrapped up with the transformative period of death. And today, I get to bring you all a calling. I'm super excited about it. And so, when we talk about series of transformation, and, and, and things that can be transformative moments in our lives. A calling is one of the most transformative periods that we can talk about in, in our lives. And, and what we're gonna talk about today, we're gonna break down what a calling actually, actually is and what that can look like and how we, as people getting called, can respond to that. And how, when we respond to these calls, that they can transform our lives, our eternity, and how amazing and beautiful that can be. And a calling is unique amongst some of the things that we've been talking about because unlike some of the other ones we've been talking about, like failure and a crisis and even fortune, uh, those are things that God uses his redemptive power to make transformative and beautiful in our life. But a calling is unique amongst those because a calling is something God is ushering directly to us to call us into a transformative period and to change our lives. So the uniqueness here about calling is a little different. It's God's not redeeming something to make it transformative. He is ushering it straight from him to us to make it transformative. And a calling is a moment that can lead to an inter- eternal transformation in our lives. And so before we dive into it today, I uh, so I pray with me and we'll get going into it. Lord, thank you for just giving us the opportunity to all come here together today and just worship you and praise you and be together as a family and community, Lord. I pray that we can just welcome you in this place, Lord, and have open hearts to just receive what you have for us. Lord, I pray that through, whether it's through the, through our worship, the Lord, through, our, through a message that comes from you, Lord, and through just whatever you may put on our hearts, Lord, that we can just go a little bit closer to you and, and hear about who you are, Lord, and know about who you are, and build our relationship with you. Lord, I thank you for who you are, how amazing that is, and what that means for us. I thank you for all the means you give us, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. So, 
This topic that we're talking about is definition of what the book talks about as fault line. So the reason that the book is even called fault lines, the author goes into it to explain it a little bit, is it's in reference to the tectonic shifting plates that like ride, ride under the Earth's surface. It's in reference to the fact of these plates, one specific reference he makes is Death Valley, is they shift and they move and they're unpredictable sometimes and they can cause a lot of uncertainty, chaos, unpredictability, and you know, quite literally groundbreaking earthquakes. But on the other hand, when these false lines shift and move, they can create unimaginable beauties like the mountains or like beautiful rolling canyons or fields of flowers. And so when we talk about fault lines today, when we reference fault lines, it's in reference to that, that tension, that moment of the in-between where in the middle of maybe uncertainty and chaos and things shaking around us, they can also, moments can be taken to lead to beauty and peace and things that we can't even imagine. So when we talk about fault lines, and as we talk about it, that's what that's in reference to, and that's where we get that from in the first place. So a calling that we're going to talk about is something that can be transformed into something that we all will experience. We all are getting called out to, and we're all experiencing. And so, as we talk about calling, something that gets talked about a lot. We hear the word call and calling being called a lot in, in church, in different books, in different lessons, and just around in our everyday. But what does that really mean? And so, a call is a summon from God to get involved in something that He is doing. A call is a summon from God to get involved in something that He is doing. And sometimes, when we look at these calls, and we dive into it here in a second, we're going to see that they can happen out of our strengths or our comfort, to something we feel really confident in. And yeah, while there is still tension, and there is still those fault lines in that moment, and we still have to make the choice to step out into those, a lot of the times where the real tension and the fault line really gets hectic is, is when we're called out of our weaknesses, or we're called out of things that we feel like we can't do, or we're called to things that we feel like we're not capable of doing. And so today, as we talk about it, we're going to dive in and see that, and we see examples of it all over the Bible, an example that we're going to talk about today comes from a book that we're a little familiar with as a church called Exodus, because we're a little familiar with it because we spent like 50 weeks in it. Uh, I talked to Schaefer before, and he said it was okay to make that joke because he also agreed we were in Exodus for a very long time. But being in Exodus, we read a lot and saw the story of Moses. And so in the beginning of Exodus, we see Moses call God through the burning bush, God who calls Moses to go back to Egypt and rescue God's people. And so in Exodus 3, 10 through 11, it says this. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? So right there we see, we see a call. We see God calling Moses go back to Egypt and rescue his people and to be part of what is happening in, in Egypt and rescuing his people. But Moses, his first reaction when he's called, he wonders, who am I? Who am I that I should go? Who am I that you should send me? Like, I, I'm just Moses. Why are you going to send me to go do this? This is a feeling that is all too familiar to me and I think to a lot of us in the room of we feel called to something, or we, we get asked to do something, and it's, it's like, who am I to be do this? I'm not, I'm not good enough to do that. I'm not worthy to that. I, I try to do that, it won't work. And that was, that was what Moses felt right there. And a lot of the times when we feel these calls that we're going to talk about and say, this is a feeling that instantly jumps into our brain, and the feeling that we struggle with, and this is really where that tension comes, is, is who am I? If I go to do this, it won't work. Or I not worthy. Or if you only knew that I wasn't capable of this. But but in Exodus 12, God helps us get a little bit more perspective on this idea of who am I? In Exodus 12, 3, 12, he continues to go on and say, And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. So Moses says, when Moses says, who am I, God's response is, I will be with you. And I, you know that I have sent you. So when Moses is like, but who am I, I can't do this, I can't go rescue the people, God says, I, but I will be with you. 
and, and that's what matters. So see, when we, the, the idea of the mindset we have to shift is that when we think about answering your call or going into a call, when we are putting all the power and the responsibility in our hands and thinking, who am I? How am I capable to do this? That's not the right mindset because the, when God is calling us into something he is doing, he is not asking if we are capable to do it. He is telling us that he will be with us and he is capable of doing it. And that he is going to be the one who sent us into that. And so when we change that mentality of it's not about who I am, it's about who God is, that it makes answering these calls and changing our perspective on answering these calls and stepping out into those so much different. Because when we look at it with Moses, it wasn't about who Moses was or what he was going to do for God. It's about what God would go on to do through him. And so as we about to dive into some of these different callings and what they look like, I want us to remember that. Because all these callings about to look up, they're going to involve us following Jesus and getting to know Jesus and building that relationship with Jesus. And as we continue to go on, we're going to see this call deeper and deeper. And so, with a calling and that in mind, what does a calling look like? What can that look like? So the first call we're going to talk about today, the very first call any of us will see, and that is a call to salvation. A call to salvation is the first thing we're going to talk about today. This is the first call we'll experience, and this is a call when we hear, we hear the news of Jesus, we hear him calling out to us, we hear him wanting to know that relationship with us, and we accept that call. That call and accept him as a Lord and Savior into our hearts. And when we talk about transformative, this is quite literally one of the most transformative moments that anyone could experience. It's when we are walking from death to life, it's when we're giving up our old self and walking into a new life with Jesus. And when we talk about transformative periods in our life and a series of transformations, this is the moment that leads to eternal transformation every single one of us. Second Timothy talks about it like this. It says in 2 Timothy 1.9, He has saved us and called us to a holy life. Not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. The grace that was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. That's transformative. Like we talk about who might it's not because of anything that we did. Jesus is calling out to us because of who he is, not because of anything that we've done. This call happens, this call really happens and we really feel it whenever verses like this and so many more are the idea of the gospel. And just hearing Jesus, when that call becomes more than just words, or when the, the lyrics to a song become more than just words, or the feeling become more than just feelings, it's when they become personal. So when that call becomes a personal, whenever we, we see this, and it's not just he has saved and called us to a holy life, it's when he has saved and called me to a holy life. He is calling out to me, and he has saved me. And that's a call that he's giving out to every single one of us in here today. And a lot of us have answered that call. And that's something that is just so transformative and beautiful and amazing. But just like we talked about in that fault line, it's also something that can come with fear and uncertainty sometimes, because sometimes we have that idea of, I, who am I that God has saved me? Who am I that I'm worthy to be, to be saved? And, and that's, that's where that fall and that tension comes of answering that call and being scared to answer that call. But my encouragement is to, with this call, with the salvational call, is that, it doesn't, like we said, like we saw with Moses, it doesn't matter who you are, because God saved all of us. Jesus has died for every single one of us. And he's calling out. He's running to meet us and welcome us home. And that is a moment of transformation. That's a moment that is beautiful and amazing. And it's a call that is transformative. And this moment is beautiful and it brings so much transformation. It's something that we need to celebrate. The heavens rejoice with this. And after we accept this call, we'll get called deeper and deeper, and we'll feel this next call we're about to talk about, this call that will come after, and that's going to be the call to simplicity. The call to simplicity. And so when we're talking about simplicity today, it's not in the, in the tense of like easy or, you know, just basic. 
we're talking about simplicity today, it's going to mean singleness of purpose. A call to a singleness of purpose. This call to simplicity or a singleness of purpose is to have a single focus, a single root in our lives. And so I have a story that kind of paints a picture, an example of this. Um, like I mentioned, and I didn't mention in my introduction, I am going into my third year at Howard King University and with a major, double major in English and Bible. And part of the way that I stay involved and serve there is I'm the president of a Christian fraternity on campus called Delta Epsilon Omega. And that's been a super amazing opportunity to have. When we're talking about transformations, we've definitely been in a season of transformations in our own right. Um, after my freshman year, I was going into the pledge class, and after people leaving and graduating seniors and such, there was uh, two uh, members left. It was me and the other person who pledged in with me. I don't know if y'all know much about like fraternities, but it's usually not just two bros hanging out. That's usually not how it works. And so the for voting for exec positions, we all walked in, and the graduating seniors and the people leaving were like, well, y'all have a couple options here. Y'all either kind of just say it's one of the course and let it go, or you two can basically become president and vice president and take it over and see if, what y'all can do with it. And so me and my vice president, we prayed about it together. We were like, we feel like there's more to be had with this organization. So we decided to take the next step and to see what we could do with it. And it has definitely been through God's provision. It's definitely been a transformative period. We started with two in that, in that uh going to death fall, by the end of the spring semester, we had 13 people on the roster. So it was actually an organization again, it wasn't just us hanging out. But in the middle of that transformative time, going through that, we were sitting down talking to our Bible, we were planning all these, we were like, okay, we have to do these events, we have to do this at our meetings, we have to go to these fundraisers, we have to get ready for this big thing, we have to build these things. And one of our advisors was, was talking to us, and he kind of just stopped us in one of our meetings, and he, and he said this, he, he reminded us, he was like, these things are all great, these things are amazing, but we don't need to figure out how to bring Jesus into all these things that we are doing. We need everything that we're going to be doing to start with Jesus. And so that, that, was, that moment was kind of a shift in our organization of like, yeah, we could do all these crazy events, we could, we could do good in these competitions, we could go, you know, have a lot of people join us and stuff, but but if we're trying to figure out how to you know do all that and then bring Jesus in, then we're gonna we're not setting ourselves up for success. He said, make sure that it starts with Jesus. Make sure it is a singleness of purpose. And so that's that's that call to simplicity that we're talking about. It's it's we've accepted the call to salvation, we've accepted Jesus into our lives, and now we feel that call of Jesus, and we know who Jesus is, and we have that relationship with him. He has saved us, but now, is he what is starting everything we do in our lives? Is he the simple and only focus in our lives? And so, the, the book of Colossians, Paul the Apostle, says it like this, and he says, Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father, through him. That's Colossians 3, 17. And so it's, it's this idea of we've accepted Jesus and now here comes that tension again of I've accepted him and now now where are my priorities lie? What am I doing with my life? Why? And it's not necessarily this 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 call doesn't even necessarily mean things are gonna maybe some things might change, but it doesn't mean, you know, I'm gonna drop everything and go get a new job. It might mean, okay, but what is what is leading my conversations when I'm at work? What is influencing the way I talk when I'm at work? What is influencing the way I treat the people that I work with? It's that call to simplicity of everything we do in our lives stems from our relationship with Jesus. It starts with our relationship with Jesus. And this, this, this call requires us to be persistent and to sometimes step out of our comfort zones and to change the priorities and the comforts of our life. But it's a call that, again, we are being called to, to to really evaluate and see is Jesus the system the beginning of my life and once we've answered that call and we've felt the peace the unexplainable peace and beauty that might come with that then we get to one more call 
And so the last call we're going to talk about today is a call to a mission. A call to mission. And so the term mission, just being called to mission, is a term that we hear a lot. We, and we often associate that with things the likes of going on a mission trip or traveling overseas or doing some sort of service project. And yes, those things are all very much calls to mission, not to say that those aren't. But a call to mission is so much more than just those specific things that we sometimes associate it with. So the call to a mission is a call to a specific place, people group, or just something that is happening. It's God calling us to something that he is doing in a specific place for some period of time. And the author makes a point for us to know that this is a call to mission because he said this one's unique because it will have a beginning and an end. So when you're called to a mission, you're called to serve in a specific place or for, with a specific group of people for a specific time to serve him in that way, whatever he might be calling you to do in that moment. Sometimes a call to a mission can be pursuing a feeling or a dream that we've had for a long, long time. And we've, and we've had this feeling that a call to maybe it is to go go serve in an overseas, overseas country, or maybe it is to, to, to move to a different town and go, and go serve at a different job or at a different vocation or with a different group of people. Sometimes it's something we dream of. Other times, it can be asking us to give up everything that we know in our very lives to go serve the Lord. And both of these, again, that tension, that fall line is what comes into play with the call to a mission. And the call to a mission can be the one that creates that most intense fall line because a lot of times it can require us to give up everything that we know as a comfort or everything we hold as normal or shut out of our comfort zones for Jesus to serve the Lord. Jesus talks about this idea and of giving it all up in, in Matthew, and he says it like this, that Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Denying ourselves is, is hard. It's in our human nature to, to think about ourselves sometimes in, in these things, and that really creates that tension when God is calling us to something that, again, we're like, well, that, that sounds amazing, that's a great calling, but are you, are you sure that's for me? Are you sure that that's, that's what I'm called to do? And so, whenever um, me, Schaefer, and I, we kind of sat down and we were talking about this series and, and talking about what I would be doing, what I'd be teaching over, the, call, the calling series was kind of what, what ended up being on me based off dates and just what we were prepared to do. And it was just really ironic, it felt too perfect because this specifically, these calls are something that I've been kind of in that own fault line in my life for a while. So going into my first year at Howard Payne, I had like absolutely no idea what I was going to do, you know, from a major career wise whatsoever. Um, so we're getting close to the, you know, registration, they're like, pick a major, and I was like, well, my whole family's either been like teachers or lawyers, and I don't want to go to school for eight years and be a lawyer, so teacher it is. I'm like, I know things, I could work with students. So teacher it is, I'll go do that. Um, I feel like I could do that pretty pretty capably and easy, not to say that teaching's easy, uh, but I feel like I could handle that pretty well. And then like a couple weeks before, they called me and they were like, hey, you have education, but you don't have like a subject, you can't do that. And I was like, in my mind, I was like, okay, my best, my best scores were English, I'm gonna do English. And then, and then she, I say English, and she tells me, oh, that's your best score. And I was like, yes. I was like, I guess right. And so that's how high school English teacher became my major. Um, and I did that because I really didn't, didn't have, I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I didn't, I knew that was something I could do comfortably and easy for me. That was something that was in my comforts that I could do easily. And around this time was when I really felt this call to simplicity in my own life, when I started to reevaluate my priorities and, re and kind of shift some things in my life to everything stemmed from Jesus. And that was also around the time that I started picking up my internship here and serving here. So in that moment, I started to get this call, I started to feel this call years ago of, hey, ministry, like the work here, that's what I want you to do. And I had that, that who am I reaction instantly. I was like, but who, who am I to do this? Like, like if only you knew me, God, like you wouldn't pick me for this. And then he said, hey, he kept reminding me of what the scripture talked about, but I know who I am, and 
I am calling you to be at work in this. And so I started my internship here, and throughout my first year serving here, I just kept, I kept in, in not only enjoying, I just kept enjoying the time with the kids more and more, and starting with them more and more, and I got the opportunity to do a couple of like one-off teachings every once in a while. And at first I was headed to some, I like public speaking, but the idea of just, I, the preaching, I was like, are you sure? I'm like, the, the kids aren't even going to listen to me, they're not even, and, and that part's true. But, <laughs> but I, I, they might not pick up what I'm saying, or am I going to be able to communicate your word well with him and God? And he, he said, I want you to do this. And so I did a couple of those, and after that first year, I, that's, that's when I really felt that tension of fall line. I, he called me to, I felt the call, I started to feel the call as a ministry service teaching, that's what I want you to do. And I was like, uh, are you, and I, so I, I made a compromise, right? So I was like, you know what? Fine, I'll, I'll add a Bible minor. And so that's what I did. I added a Bible minor at the beginning of this fall semester. And then going on past that, that college kept growing and growing. And for a year, I just battled and tried to compromise with that. And, and finally, I just, I felt the call. And I, he called me to do start teaching middle school. That all came up, we talked about it. And I was like, every week? Are you sure? That's, that's more than just a couple of times. And I did it, and then I was like, okay, I'll start in this way, but I'm still gonna go teach later on down the line. And then the college kept growing, and I kept, I kept trying to, to compromise, and God said, ministry, teaching, that's what I want you to do. So finally, finally, what I did is it's the call to that mission. I said, you know what? God, I, I, I'm going to know who you are. And I, I don't know if I can do this. Or I don't know what comes with this. And I'm going to give up the certainties that come with the teaching for me and then knowing I can do it comfortably. And I'm, I'm going to give it up to you. And so at the end of this last semester, I dropped out of the education program completely and changed my Bible minor to a major with emphasis in youth ministry. And... And now, I'm definitely still living in that fault line of some uncertainty of knowing what comes next in that. But, but that peace, there's a peace in it that, that is beautiful and that has came out of that tension in that moment. Answering a call and giving up our, giving up our lives and denying ourselves is something that will take great sacrifice but will be so transformative and lead to great beauty. And so, looking at those calls, now how do we take that and what does that mean for us here today? So the application of this, all of us are probably feeling one of these three calls in some sort of version of it that we talked about today. We're probably all in maybe a tension or we've answered one of these calls and we're, we're kind of wondering maybe, maybe what to do with that. So the first thing that we talked about that we need, need to address here is in order to receive a call and understand the call, we have to have a connection, right? Um, this one more applies to the simplicity and the mission because to get our connect, getting that connection and getting that relationship is answering that call to salvation. That's how we get that connection, we get that relationship. That's how we start to build, we answer the call that God is calling out to us and knowing us and wants to know us and we accept that and accept him into our hearts and we build that connection. But, but, to, but then maybe we answer that call to salvation and we feel like we haven't had, felt anything since question of that is, are, are we, do we have a connection? None of us would be shocked if we stopped paying our phone bill and then we were unable to receive phone calls. So why would we be shocked if we don't build a connection with the Lord, we're not in prayer, we're not in our word, if we don't do anything with our faith, but then we don't, we don't feel like we're getting any call to simplicity or to a mission. We have to have a connection in order to receive a call. The next thing that one of us might, that we might need to do, if we're feeling that call, is maybe we need to choose. Maybe we've been wanting to accept a call to salvation for a while, and we just feel like we're not ready, or we're not capable, or we're not good enough. Or maybe we are feeling the call, that call to simplicity, we've accepted the call to salvation. Or maybe we feel a call to a mission that we felt for a long time, or it's just coming up, and we don't know what to do with it. Maybe we need to choose to step out of that faith and accept that call and answer that call. Um, I had this in the notes specifically, so I would say it. Uh, Van, go ahead, you can make it our way back up. Uh, 
make sure, make sure to put that in there because uh, my, my boss, Alex, likes to forget that a lot. <sighs> maybe, maybe we need to choose. Maybe, maybe some of us need to leave. Maybe we need to leave behind current, current priorities in our lives, or leave behind current comforts in our lives, or maybe even we need to leave behind a mission that we were called to, but then we grew comfortable in, and now we're feeling like now God's calling us to a new mission, but we're wanting to stay in our one that we finally grew comfortable in. Or we're wanting to stay in a mission that we're like, okay, I took my step out, it worked, I did my mission and I'm good. Maybe we need to leave behind a mission that we were able to go to, a mission that we're being called to now. Maybe we need to leave and go to what God has called us to next. Or maybe, maybe we're going to call right now. Maybe we just need to persevere. Maybe we need to persevere. Maybe we answer our call of salvation and it's it started off great and now it's gotten difficult. Call. I have family, I have a friend, I have I have people at work to, to deal with and, and, they, and they're, they're not as supportive as I thought they would be and I don't know what to do. Maybe we just need to persevere to that. Find comfort in the Lord. Find comfort in the community that you have. Maybe we're in that call of simplicity and it's, it's hard readjusting our priorities in our life. We need to persevere. Or we're in a mission and it's not easy. We're serving in a mission where we are dying for ourselves and that's not easy. But we just need to persevere through it because the testing of our faith is going to produce great things. Maybe we need to persevere through a call. And so, as we talk about a calling today, and as we talk about transformations in this series, and how transformative these callings can be, just remember, God is calling every single one of us. In whatever form it may be, He's calling every single one of us to something. And it doesn't matter who you are. It's about who God is what he is calling us to be a part of that he is already doing. So my encouragement is to answer the call. Because yes, we'll be in that fault line, we'll have that chaos, we'll have that tension, but it's going to lead to eternal change and transformation in our lives and the lives of the people that we might get to serve through that. Answer the call. Alright, I'll pray for us. Lord, thank you for just bringing us here today. I pray that we can just hear Lord, Lord, and that we can just invite you into our hearts, Lord, and that we can hear your calls that you might be having for us, and we can just answer them, and whether it's stepping out in faith or persevering or leaving things behind in comforts, Lord, I pray that we can just take that up to you and trust in you and who you are and how amazing that you are. I thank you for this, this church and this family, Lord, that you give us to come and worship, worship you and serve together with you, Lord. I pray that you can just be with us as we go out and help us to share about who you are, Lord, every single day. Thank you for being born on this and this, Lord. It's your name I pray. Amen. Hey, church. Uh, Pastor Schaefer here. I am not in town today. I am at a family reunion. And I am on the other end of the church. So if you want to see me, you can come on down to traditional. Yeah, you can leave right now and go hear Alex preach. <laughs> but don't, because today in Common Ground, Luke Moss is giving a sermon. And we are so proud of Luke so excited that you get to see how the Lord has blessed him and called him. I've known Luke since he was in the fourth grade, and I've seen Luke serve in every area of this church. He's an incredible young man, and it's so cool to see how God is using him. Yeah, uh, I've been here almost five years now, and Luke has been in the program, a small group leader, and an intern. He's been like teaching in middle school for the last uh, year as our teaching and she's done a phenomenal job. And so we were super bummed that we couldn't be here physically to support him. Uh, but we wanted to just film this to say, Luke, you're going to rock it today. Uh, we're so glad you're a part of this church and that you can serve uh, using your gifts. Yeah, and I'm praying for you right now, Luke, in this moment uh, at the Common Ground. We're so excited for you guys to hear what Luke has to say. Love you guys. Bye.